What's going on guys? Today's video, I am excited because we are finally getting ready to put this Hellcat engine into this Dodge Ram 1500 single cab. So yes, I'm calling it a Dodge, even though a lot of people will maybe argue and say it's a Ram and not a Dodge, but we're about to put a Dodge engine in it. So I think we can call it a Dodge, but Nonetheless, we've got our Hellcat engine here. If you guys don't know about this, this is a used Hellcat engine. And we actually just finished going through this engine. So we completely went through it. Um, we wanted to make sure it was good. So we took the heads off and took everything apart. We ended up uh, taking all the valves out, the springs. We lapped all the valves. We wanted to make sure everything was good to go. So, so it's got brand new head bolts, brand new Mopar gaskets in it. Uh, we finished converting it to rear sump. So I got that. I actually did get the gasket that we were waiting on. So there's the uh, windage tray along with the combined gasket, how Mopar likes to do it. So I got that, that has to go in. And then we also have some goodies that just arrived. So I don't have the supercharger on it just yet. And the reason being because the sensor right here, I do have to wire the harness up. And uh, this is a dog to get to with the charger on. So I left it off just until I finish doing the wiring harness. So that's the reason why I haven't put this back on. But we have some pieces and parts that have arrived. So this is the factory cooler. And a lot of times, or previously, you can see that the cooler sticks out on this side. So a lot of guys used to you know, cut the firewalls and do all sorts of stuff. But we have this brilliant piece from Earl's Performance right here, and I'll link this down below where you guys can get your hands on one of these. This brings everything forward and tucks it up. You save like a good nearly two inches from here. So if I butt this right up, you can see that the Earl's unit keeps everything tucked up to the charger, giving you a lot more space um, for your swap, whatever project you might be putting on here. And it's a really nice unit. So it utilizes the factory bleed screw and then the factory sensor on the bottom there. And then we can put it there. I'm actually waiting for some hardware to uh, arrive. Um, I was missing some hardware on the back, so I got some bolts, but I was just getting everything mocked up. I have some uh, Permatex thread sealant as well, so I do want to get that on the sensor and our bleed as well, so that's all ready to go. But this is a really nice piece by Earl's. Like I said, I'll link it down below if you guys are doing something crazy, some sort of Hellcat swap. This is definitely top of the line hardware that you're going to want to do. The other thing is we finally received our PCM. So Diablo Sport, huge shout out to these guys. They hooked us up with our PCM and our tuner. So we've got the Diablo Sport i3 here, our instructions, and we've got this brand new Mopar controller right here. So this PCM is a Hellcat PCM, Hellcat part number, and this is going to obviously talk to our Hellcat engine in our fourth gen RAM and make everything compatible. So we've got that. Um, so we're pretty much geared up to go. I am waiting for some parts to still arrive, of course. Still have some different stuff, some different brackets and uh, a bunch of odds and ends that whatever it takes transmission parts um, is helping us out with. So once that stuff arrives, I'll definitely uh, you know show you guys all that stuff. But for now, today, let's get this Earl's cooler sorted out. Let's get some sealant on there. And uh, also we do have to get that pan gasket in and just get a bunch of little things buttoned up so that we can uh, start preparing ourselves to get this done. One thing I am gonna do, you guys, is uh, over at Shop Hellcats, they actually kind of pointed something out to me and I did notice, since this blower has been apart, when you take off this piece from Earl's off the back, and again, super trick piece, like check out the difference there. You can see the height difference right there as far as how much it saves us, but my camera does have a bit of a fisheye lens so I don't know if you'll be able to see it but these cooling bricks on this side the spout sticks out further than on here and one of the things that shop Hellcats our boys over there pointed out to me is you have to make sure when you put the cooling brick in that you slide it all the way to the back otherwise you risk these o-rings not sealing into your port so i definitely don't want to have that issue happen so since i haven't fully put all the bolts in the lid i'm gonna take the lid back off and i'm gonna slide that cooling brick back so hopefully you guys can see this one's barely sticking out compared to this one's probably another eighth to a quarter inch sticking out further than that one so i'm gonna slide this guy back so we get a good seal 
once we put on our crossover pipe. Here's what I'm talking about here. You can probably see here, there's this little gap here. So we're gonna loosen these three Torx screws and we're just gonna slide it back just ever so slightly just to give us a bit more bite on the back here. All right, so I just moved this one forward. So now you can see this is butted up right here. And then this one we can actually move back as well. So I loosen these three screws. Just get this back here and watch, we can push this back. So see how that just tightened things up. So now these are sticking out a little bit more, gives a little bit more depth on that O-ring into our crossover pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put some new uh, thread lock on these because you definitely don't want these coming out. Because if one of these comes out and goes dropping around into your blower, you're uh, gonna be in for a bad day. So just a little bit of blue thread locker. We're not going too crazy on this here. Do want to be able to get it out if we ever need to. Um, <laughs> and yeah. All right, so those are all tightened down, good to go. So I'm gonna go put our gasket back on. We'll throw our lid back on, tighten down all the bolts. Okay, so all of our hardware is tight. So blower lid is all on, we're good there. Let's spin this puppy around. And let me show you guys this from the backside. And I gotta get some sealant on our two fittings there. All right, so the bleeder, I honestly, there's no point in me resealing it just yet because obviously we're gonna have to bleed the system. I could put one of these fancy Blue Earl's Performance plugs in here, but I feel like having this one be a little bit easier to access later with a wrench um, versus this one. So I'm gonna go with this one, even though this one looks a lot cooler. You're never gonna see it. It's gonna be on the back of the engine. The other thing too is it comes with these fittings here as well. So our inlet and exit fittings on here. So let's go ahead, throw this on the back of the supercharger and then we'll install these two fittings. So there we go, that fits beautifully in place. Um, I'm still waiting for my hardware to show up, so I'm just gonna throw it in place for now like that. And we'll get our two fittings on here. They're O-rings, so we don't have to put any sealant on them. And we'll use our Earl's aluminum wrenches so we don't mark up any of our surfaces and we'll get these in here in tight. So these wrenches do more than just look cool. They actually don't mark your fittings since it's an aluminum wrench. So check that out, you guys. Not a single mark in our fitting using one of these wrenches. So let me get the other one on here, tighten it up, and we'll move on. Okay, so it's the next day and I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil pan all situated. So like I mentioned, I've got that gasket and windage tray. So I'm gonna get that prepped up pretty much, not a whole lot to it, so I don't wanna bore you guys. But on the seams of the timing cover and then also on the back here, you have to put a kind of just a little smear of RTV. So we're gonna be using Permatex, the right stuff, put some there all four corners and then our pan will go on with a new gasket. All right, so I did mention on the other video, but if for some reason you guys aren't following Boosted Motorsports 2 channel and you guys haven't seen the videos of us rebuilding this engine, then you guys have no idea what I'm talking about and you guys need to go check out the videos to get caught up to speed. So this windage tray is a Hellcat tray. This is a TRX windage tray. There is some differences and on the actual tray itself and also the bolt position. So. Since we got the TRX pan, we have to use the TRX. Well, we don't have to per se, but this gasket had a little tear in it anyways. And rather than drill out a few holes on the Hellcat windage tray and gasket, I just went ahead and got the TRX gasket and windage tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that on. You guys aren't missing much, not that exciting. RTV, gasket, tray, pan. Okay, so we got just a little bit of our Permatex right stuff on those four seams. And we'll go ahead and throw this pan on. There we go. Okay, so up next, I got some stuff to do and show you guys, but just in case you may or may not be new to the channel, this is what we've done so far on the interior. This thing has the interior prepped ready for that engine. So we got real legit Hellcat seats. So you can see there, Hellcat seats. Um, so, and we also did center console. We did the leather stitched dash, premium dash, 8.4 Uconnect. Um, working on getting the steering wheel as well. Might just go with a leather steering wheel. There's a lot of custom ones out there, so maybe we'll do something like that. Upper glove box mod. We've pretty much done a lot of stuff into this. Only thing left is just the door panels so we can get power locks and power windows in here, but right now she's pretty lightweight, boys. So just wanted to show you guys that real quick. What I do have on the go right now is the boys over at MSD. They hook us up with their coil packs. So these coil packs are gonna give us all the spark that we need for this Hellcat engine. And I'll show you guys those in just a second. And to go along with that, we got brand new NGK Iridium 
spark plugs. So 16 of these puppies and uh, we've got enough spark for 16 as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, just double check these. Normally you don't have to gap them, but I just wanna verify them, make sure they're good to go. And we'll drop them in so that we've got brand new plugs, brand new coil packs, and this thing's gonna be ready to rock. And if anyone's wondering, they seem to be coming in at about, about 27 or 28 thou. So they seem pretty consistent between plugs, but I'll just double check just in case any of them went for a ride on shipping or warehouse, in case they went for a bounce. All right, folks, check that out. It looks really good. It almost gives me like uh, some demon uh, vibes over here or red eye stuff with the red going on. But comment down below what you guys think. Uh, performance will definitely be uh, improved with these coil packs. So that's all on there. Like I said, we are waiting for a bunch of parts to show up. So I am pretty much waiting for a few more things to arrive. We've got a bunch of stuff on order. We've got our high volume fuel pump coming. So we've got that stuff coming from Holly, uh, Earl's performance fuel lines. So we got fuel lines, oil cooler lines on their way. Uh, we've got uh, our coolers in the front coming. So a lot of stuff is gonna show up in the next two weeks. And what the plan is right now is beginning, probably the beginning of next week, we're gonna start yanking this out. So even though I don't have all the pieces, everything should be showing up within the next week or two. So. We can at least get that one out. I'm gonna have to do some custom harness stuff. So I will be doing that in order to get this to run in this chassis. So it's not like they just make a harness for this application. So I will have to be making a custom harness. So that's uh, gonna take some time. So I might as well get the engine out. That way I can get underway on that while some other parts show up. But other than that, as far as you know, getting this thing all back together and ready, like I said, I'm just leaving the blower off right now because I gotta get to the sensor when we do our custom harness. So I just wanna make it easier for me. And I might, I haven't decided just yet, I might end up dropping the engine in without the blower on it and then putting in the blower afterwards. So we'll see how that goes. Either way, we've got a lot of work to do. So thanks for watching guys. Again, if you guys haven't seen all the videos leading up to this point, check them out. Like I said, uh, we posted all the engine rebuild stuff on Boosted Motorsports 2 channel. And as far as the truck itself, we've got a built rear axle in it, drop kit, full interior, all that stuff that's on our main channel, Boosted Motorsports. So if you guys are new to the channel and you wanna see and follow the build and see how we got to where we're at now, this truck was like a work truck you know, several months ago and it didn't look anything like it looks now. Now it looks like a proper sports truck. But trust me, it did not look anything like you see it behind us. So the subscribers know, they can chime in down below on what this thing used to look like and how they feel it's improved. Also, all the performance parts that we showed in this video will be linked down below for you guys if you wanna check them out. But thanks for watching guys. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe so that you're notified. Also, make sure you turn on the bell. YouTube is changing a lot of things, so unless you have that bell clicked and your notifications turned to all, even if you don't watch a video or you check back, even for my own preferences on other channels I watch, if you don't have that turned on and you don't check back with the channel once in a while, it won't notify you, the videos won't show up in your feed. So YouTube is really focusing on paying attention to what videos you watch and it's just suggesting the same thing over and over and over again once it sees something that you've watched for a little bit. So just make sure your notifications are turned on if you don't wanna miss anything. We'll catch you guys on the next one.